Welcome back to Lost Ash Channel. My name is Anton Vjeldsen. I'm an attorney in the Southern District of California here in San Diego. I'm actually licensed in California, Nevada, and I take cases throughout the West Coast. Today we're going to discuss a case where police officers had a valid arrest warrant, but there was a problem. When they arrived to the house, the person they were supposed to arrest was not there. So there are two issues. Number one, do police officers need to have reasonable belief that a person they're arresting is actually in the house? And number two, whether an 11 year old stepdaughter can give consent to police to enter the home. Before we answer these two questions, I want to thank you for watching me on YouTube. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also share this channel with your friends. And if you're listening to the audio version of this recording on Spotify or Audible, please give my podcast a five-star review rating. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from Lost Ash Law Firm at Western Region San Diego. To accept this call, press 5. To refuse this call, hang up now. Thank you for using TNetics. You may start the conversation now. Today we're discussing People versus Jacobs, which is a California Supreme Court case. And here's what happened. Mr. Jacobs was a janitor at auto dealership, which was burglarized a number of times. And a few television sets were stolen. Now the officers had some evidence to suggest that Mr. Jacobs was in fact responsible for some of these burglaries. They obtained a valid arrest warrant and at 3.22 p.m. two police officers wearing plain clothes and driving an unmarked vehicle arrived to Mr. Jacobs' home. They knocked on the front door and were greeted by Mr. Jacobs' 11-year-old stepdaughter. Now what happens next depends on who you believe. The officer testified that he asked the daughter whether Mr. Jacobs was in the house. She answered no, so he gave her his business card and asked for permission to go inside the home to double check whether Mr. Jacobs was in fact gone. Now he testified that the officer along with the daughter went inside the house and she walked him around. Now the daughter later testified that she did get a business card, but the way the officer asked her sounded more like he needed to check the house to make sure that Mr. Jacobs was not there. So he went into the home as the daughter stayed in the living room. On the way out, the officer noticed in plain view a television set, which matched the description of the one stolen from the dealership. So he sees the television set, which was later used as evidence against Mr. Jacobs in trial. So here's the law. Remember, the Fourth Amendment protects you against unreasonable searches and seizures, meaning that officers, generally speaking, need to have a warrant before they search or seize you. Now here we have a valid arrest warrant. So the Fourth Amendment seems to be not an issue, but it is. In California, under Penal Code 844, officers not only need to know that the person they're arresting under the arrest warrant lives at the place, but they need to have reasonable belief that that individual will be in fact in the house when they try to execute the arrest warrant. So in this case, the officer testified that he double checked with his records and employment records that Mr. Jacobs in fact lived at the residence. And because Mr. Jacobs had a nighttime job, he should have been home during the day at 3.22 p.m. But here's what the court says. He should have been there. But Penal Code 844 asks more out of the officers. They need to have reasonable belief that the person would actually be there, meaning they should have set some surveillance to make sure that when they knock on the door, Mr. Jacobs would have been in the house. It is not enough to say that the person should have been there. Because if we go down that path, the Supreme Court says that officers would be able to always go inside the house on weekends 
and holidays if they know that the person has a normal Monday through Friday daytime job. Of course, we can't do that. And that's why the statute requires more out of the officers. They need to have a reasonable belief that the person would actually be there inside the house. Now, the next issue that the government tries to bring up is consent. When it comes to consent, police officers can in fact enter and search a home if they're given permission to do so. But of course, officers need to have a reasonable and a good faith belief that Mr. Jacobs' 11-year-old daughter did in fact have authority to grant them that consent. Now, when it comes to mutual use of property, one co-inhabitant can consent to a search of his and common areas inside the home. Officers generally don't need to wait until all co-inhabitants are there at the residence to gain access to the property. People who are not present assume the risk that the other co-inhabitant would give permission to the police without their consent if they're not present there. Now, when it comes to children, it is different. Here's what the court says. All the parents may choose to grant their minor children joint access and mutual use of the home. Parents normally retain control of the home as well as the power to rescind the authority they have given. It does not startle us that a parent's consent to a search of a living room in the absence of his minor is given effect. But we should not allow the police to rely on the consent of a child to bind the parent. The common sense of the matter is that the parent has not surrendered his privacy of a place in the living room to the discretion of the child. Rather, the latter has the privacy of the place there is in discretion of the former. A child cannot waive the privacy rights of her parent. That's, of course, common sense that children are not given the full authority in the residence where they live. The parent retains that authority. Now, of course, there are exceptions to the rule. Sometimes the child can be a victim and officers need to enter the home to give help to that victim child. And so in that situation, the child might actually have authority to allow the police in. But the Supreme Court doesn't go into those exceptions. Here, there is nothing on the record to suggest that Mr. Jacob's daughter did in fact have authority to let them into the home. She was only 11 years old and there was nothing other than her age that suggests that she doesn't have authority to show to general public and of course to the officers themselves that she had authority to let them in. For those reasons, the Supreme Court says that this was not a valid entry. This was done in violation of the Fourth Amendment. And that means that even though the officers had a valid arrest warrant, the execution violated the Fourth Amendment. There was no consent and they violated Penal Code 844. And for that reason, the evidence that was seized and later used in trial against Mr. Jacobs, namely the television set, should have been suppressed. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so next time I post on YouTube, you'll be first to know. And if you're listening to the audio version of this recording on Audible or Spotify, please give my podcast a five-star review rating. Thanks for watching.